right, so I'm here with Bradley of Bradley Entertainment. So before we get started with everything, we're about a month out from Masquerade. How are you feeling right now? Are you on schedule or behind schedule? Or are you ahead of schedule? Uh, man, it's been a, a long, long process, man. It's been going on for like two years since 2020. This is actually a reschedule from Ballroom Blitz from March 2020. Yeah. So, I mean, we're doing okay. You know, I mean, uh, we're still here. We're still fighting it. You know, we're still... It's still a go. So as it stands right now, we're doing we're doing rather well. We're just ready to get this thing going and, and show everybody what we have for them. So, all right. So before we get into you know all the details of Masquerade, give people a little background of who you are. You know, maybe big shows that you've had a hand in promoting, just so they know that this is a legit thing. Sure. Well, um, BLE first started. Um, we actually got LLC in Vegas, but BLE actually started in Baltimore, Maryland. I am a Baltimore-based guy. Been in Maryland majority of my life. Um, from the time I was zero to thirty-five, uh, I was in Maryland, and then I was in uh, Vegas for three years until um, um, so I was thirty-eight until twenty twenty. Uh, COVID sent us back to the East Coast. My family and I moved back to the East Coast, and uh, we are now back to being Maryland-based. Uh, we started out with a show called Sleazy Slimy Sunday, and no, it's not easy to say, so I'm trying to repeat it. Um, but Sleazy Slimy Sunday, it was a Sunday show that we did, kind of like a hangover show, if you will, after the M3 weekends. Uh, we did three of those, uh, Sleazy 1, Sleazy 2, Sleazy 3. Sleazy 1 was Ted Poley headlines. Sleazy 2 was a combination of Killer Dwarfs, who is also on Masquerade, and Bullet Boys. Um, and then part three was uh, originally slated to be Junkyard as a headliner, and Junkyard ended up being the direct support because we picked up LA Guns uh, last minute as they fell off the M3 festival. So um, we also did a show in Atlanta, Georgia, named uh, Rocklanta. Um, yeah, clever, I know. But yeah, Rocklanta, um, two-day two day festival. That was our first uh, two-day fest. Um, all the sleazes were one-day fest. That was our first efforts at a, at a mini fest. And now Masquerade started out as a two-day uh, ballroom blitz. And now Masquerade is now a three-day event, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. All right. So the first thing that caught my eye was when the show was announced. You and I are both excited about this building, I'm assuming for the same reason. If you want to talk a little bit about where it's being run sure. in Philly. Sure, I didn't know you were that kind of guy too, but uh, yes, yeah, I absolutely. Am. Um, so Rocklanta was like the same way. Uh, Rocklanta yep. was actually uh, center stage, which is the old uh, WCW Saturday night um, you know, venue um, for those wrestling fans out there and also goes all the way back to the NWA days. The actual uh, promoter's office that I was using was Dusty Rhodes' actual office that he used. Um, so that was kind of cool, walking through the catacombs of that building and some of the wrestling yeah. history in there. I am a uh, wrestling buff, a music buff, a movie buff, just entertainment in general. Um, as you know, um, as you alluded to, 2300 Arena is the old ECW home um, from when they were in, uh, based out of Philadelphia. So. Um, when I was actually offered the 2300, um, well, not offered it, but when I was offered to go down and check it out, it's was offered through a mutual friend to come down and look at it because they thought that it might be a good fit. And my initial, I will be 100% transparent, uh, my initial uh, um, angling was uh, was of pure ignorance. Uh, last time I was in there, it smelled like urine and they were playing bingo in the back. And I was like, uh, it's not the kind of facility. I, and it was perfect for wrestling and throwing people through barbed wire tables. But for, yeah. uh, for the event we're trying to put off, I mean, it's it's cool, but at the same time, it's a little bit too downplayed. And uh, they were like, no, they, they totally remodeled it. It's under, you know, under ownership and everything like that, new management, that sort of thing. Uh, they really revamped the place and they're wanting to bring live music there. Um, they do some hip hop stuff and some Broadway plays and uh, kickboxing, MMA, some of that type of stuff. Um, and wrestling, of course, TNA was there and ECW was there. And um, But now they're trying to bring in some rock concerts and that's where we, we come into the fold. And this is one of their first uh, first mini fests under the new uh, moniker of, of 2300 Arena. So is that the reason that it was moved from Maryland to Philly then, just so you could have the- Oh, no, absolutely not. They're, 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 right. I don't know if you have um, enough bandwidth or enough memory on your computer to hold it all, but um, I will give you a little the abbreviated story. All right. Um, so it, it, as you know, and a lot of people that have been following this event know this was moved a couple of times. Um, the first time we got shut down by the governor um, due to COVID. As you know, we went under quarantine and uh, we were not allowed to have any live events. So that was the reason that it got moved from um, LaFontaine Blue. Um, LaFontaine Blue was going to be sold to a new owner um, because of COVID and quarantine and some of the other um, business um, situations um, that I won't go into because, quite frankly, I don't know 100% of the details. But the deal fell through, and uh, we ended up losing the venue. 
Um, we were offered a, a different venue that was an outdoor venue um, that was a, a venue where they were doing uh, Ravens football games, tailgating, um, things of that nature. Um, that actual uh, situation, um, there was a partnership and that ended up changing hands. When that changed hands, we lost that venue and we settled on a place down in Haverty Grace, Maryland. Um, the place in Haverty Grace, Maryland was a state-owned property um, that they were trying to switch over and be owned by the town so they could do an event center there. It's actually an old school that they were going to try and um, do the gymnasium and the auditorium as an event center um, right across from the city hall there um, by, the, uh, by the youth field. Uh, lo and behold, uh, it was supposed to be in October, uh, last weekend, like holiday weekend of, uh, uh, Halloween weekend, I should say, of, uh, of last year, of 2021. And um, in August of that year, uh, two months prior to the event, we were told that we can no longer have it indoors due to mandate laws, um, and we were going to be forced outside, um, which being forced outside, I mean, it, it's something where a, a lot of people went to, to their um, you know, to their credit, like I'm not mad at anyone for feeling this way because they have every right to feel this way. Um, it fell on us as a surprise as well as it fell on a lot of supporters as a surprise. Um, but what people don't understand is every time I have to move it, it costs money to move it because then we have, you know, different sound ordinance we have to abide by and we have to pay for, uh, you know, lighting and staging that we wouldn't have had to pay for before if it was inside of a place where they had a stage provided. So that's thousands of dollars we would have had to come up with that we quite frankly couldn't come up with that close to the event two months away. So we had to restructure and move it again. And um, there was a couple of places, uh, towns that were in the running. Um, we were experienced, uh, we were experimenting with Louisville, Kentucky, moving it out there and partnering with a promoter out in Louisville, moving it out to Louisville. Uh, for logistic reasons, the venue was cool and everything like that. The venue was, was workable and from a financial standpoint, the venue would have worked. But just moving it out that far away, it's about nine hours or so from here. Um, so it would have been a mess to move all of our staff out there and then change flights for all the artists and things. So that that just fell through. That wouldn't work. Um, there was another fest out in Wilmington, Ohio, that we were trying to partner with and help out a little bit because they were in the same kind of situation we were with the reschedules. Um, that didn't work out um, for financial reasons. Um, you know, as you see, the common theme is, is finances here. Yeah. With, uh, with yeah. COVID, the COVID period and entertainment, we just really were struggling like a lot of other independent promoters. So then we were, um, I came back from, from the meeting in, in Ohio and I was really like to the point where I didn't know what I was going to do. And um, I'm blessed to know a, a lady in, uh, in the, uh, the Philadelphia market um, by the name of Leanne. Uh, she runs a company called Soul Shine Entertainment there. And she does a lot of the, uh, the behind the scenes efforts there that, uh, that quite frankly is just taken for granted that people don't really know about. Um, and there's a lot of uh, selfless people like that behind the scenes that people don't really know about that are actually helping us um, and helping the scene as a whole and um, doing it and doing the thankless work. And she was one of those people that turned me on to 2300. And um, we went down, we had a meeting with them and we had a really good meeting with the owners and the managers and they were all about it. And it just, it almost seemed too good to be true at first. And then, um, you know, things just started to work out and it started to, uh, to take shape. And here we are a couple months later with Masquerade, three bands, and I mean, three days with uh, almost 30 bands on the bill. So, I mean, it just kind of evolved into this and, and got to be what it is. But I think that uh, it's better now for the supporters because we gave them an extra day with that third day and we gave them a little more bang for their buck by adding some bands. Um, you know, Dirty Looks was on the original schedule. They got pulled off for, uh, for scheduling reasons. Now they're back on the bill. Um, we added um, Visto Blanco back. They were off for scheduling reasons due to COVID and, and now they're back. Um, Steven Adler was a, was a full ad. We added them. Um, we also added uh, Killer Dwarfs autograph. Um, you know, so we, we're trying to do everything that we can to make sure that, you know, if somebody falls off, we add someone. I don't want to leave gaps on the bill and I want this to be as promised. I just want it to be a success for everyone. And that means supporters, venue, business owners, and uh, anyone who is a sponsor or endorsed. And of course, you know, the artists as well. Like we want this to be a win-win for everybody, you know, so everybody's coming together for this. Yeah. So I think it was back in April, you had posted a tentative picture of what the setup was going to look like. And I'm going to put that up here so people can see it. But is that still the look that you're going with? It kind of looked like an independent like wrestling stage from what I saw. That's, that's pretty much, 
That's pretty much what it is. Um, this is the first time that we've done anything of this level from a production value, um, as far as the LED screens and that sort of thing. Um, the stage is a bigger stage than we've ever worked with. Um, we're excited about it. We're not intimidated by it. We think that it's going to be better because we have, um, you know, some of the bigger names on this bill. So obviously we need to dress it up and make it look like, you know, like it should. You know, we don't want to, um, you know, take any integrity away from what we do. But at the same time, we want it to be the oohs and ahs and aesthetically pleasing as well. Um, you know, yeah. it's, it, it, as you know, I mean, if, you know, no matter if you go see uh, the stadium tour or you go see a club date, um, the first thing that will chase people out is the sound being messed up. You know, so we want to make sure that the production value is there and that the place can handle the uh, the quality of the bands that we're bringing there. And um, so far, so good. We don't have any uh, any any issues right now. Um, the production has been there. We've been doing test runs and all that kind of stuff to ensure that we don't have any kind of issues going into it. So right now, we're just uh, waiting our time, promote, promote, promote. And we have uh, just outside of four weeks left before the event. So we're uh, we're ready to get this thing underway. So I've never been to the arena. If it's anything like the convention center by me, there's like other rooms and stuff, not just the main room. Is that the way it is there? So when you when you walk into the room, like when you first see it, you're going to see like a, a rectangle building, right? I mean, it's a long building. So when you're standing at the door, getting ready to enter the building, you're going to see a, a, a long building, just like a rectangle. When you walk in uh, to your left is a ticketing uh, booth and the, the ticketing area, purchase tickets a day of or what have you, or if you have any issues, that's where the ticketing booth is. You walk up these three little steps. It's kind of like a foyer type area. And that's room one. And that room is about a 500 to 600 cap room. Um, and that room is going to house a second stage. Um, there's going to be two stages of this event. Um, not really an alternating stage type atmosphere like you would have at an M3, but there is going to be two stages and both stages are going to house entertainment. So there'll be managed playing on both stages. We don't have any overlaps right now. The way that the uh, set times are scheduled, the set times will be released about two weeks prior to the show. We're not going to release them right now, but they are ready to go. And the way that we have it situated right now, there's no overlapping. So if you are one of the people that want to see every single man on the bill, there will be an opportunity to be able to do that. So it's not like you have to pick or choose. Um, there's also a super long bar in that in that room. Uh, runs about the length of the back wall. So you have a, a bar there. You have the back side of the kitchen there that's behind the wall. Um, and you have your restrooms there, your uh, main restrooms. And then when you walk through, there's, uh, there's a couple sets of double doors, um, similar to an auditorium style. And we're going to have two sets of those double doors um, set to open. And then you can go through the double doors, and that's where the main uh, the main stage, if you will, or the main um, attraction, if you will, uh, room is. And when you go in there, you'll have the stage kind of facing you as you walk in, um, off to the right, kind of tucked in the corner, but again, an elongated bar. That bar is a concession stand, um, so they'll have you know a full restaurant. This isn't just you know chicken tenders and fries. This is actual actual food. They have an actual kitchen there where you can order you know, salads and that kind of thing as well. Um, we're going to have a couple of food trucks on hand for those people that are maybe possibly vegan or I myself am gluten free. So I have some healthier options there. Um, when you walk outside past the merch, the merch is over by the concessions. When you walk past the merch, you'll walk out the door and that door leads you outside. And outside is underneath of the 95, the I-95 overpass. Um, it's protected by the overpass, the highways above you. There'll be a beer garden out there. And there'll be some uh, some DJs out there playing. Uh, Alex Kane from Memoirs is actually going to be our our um, our guest DJ for the weekend. Um, he'll be the one on the on the mic and handling all, any kind of DJ duties. Um, and then Keith Roth is going to be there from uh, from of course Sirius XM. Yep. And we are getting ready to announce on Friday morning. And I guess this is an exclusive since you are the one interviewing me right now. Um, Tommy London is also going to be there as well. So. Um, Keith will be there on Thursday and Friday. Um, he can't be there on Saturday. Tommy arrives late Friday. He'll be there partial night Friday, and then he'll be there on Saturday. Um, so we have the MCs from the Metal Summit, which are Psycho Steve and Salem J. Um, they're going to be our MCs. Tommy and, uh, and Keith are going to be somewhat the uh, mayors, if you will, or the ringmasters of the circus. And then we have uh, Alice Kane as our DJ. Um, we also have a very special band coming down from Atlanta, Georgia, or coming up, I should say, from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, Shotgun Superstars. So Shotgun Superstars, um, 
they do a lot of deep covers. Um, they do some hardcore superstars, some kicks, some X, Y, Z. Um, they have three phenomenal sets perform for you and to perform for you. And they're going to act as the house band for the weekend. So they have uh, two sets on the side of stage and then a set on the main stage as well. So with the balls out VIP, it comes with access to all the weekend's events and exhibits. Is there any other, you know, exhibits that you haven't mentioned yet that you want to get out there? Um, of course. And they're, they're not actually a hundred percent ready to be announced just yet, but right. there, there is things going on. Of course, um, the balls out blitz, as you mentioned, um, that is a all inclusive, uh, ticket. Yep. So you won't have to pay separate for anything um, that's extracurricular activities that are added on. That is an all-inclusive event. And that is uh, basically bullpen seating. Um, stage right and stage left, we're gonna build, um, not build, but we're gonna uh, you know, um, uh, pin off, if you will, with the uh, security rallies and things of that nature, right next to the uh, catwalk. And we're gonna add stage right and stage left bullpens for Balls Out Blitz. So anyone who has Balls Out Blitz will be closer to the stage. Um, they'll have that stage access. They also have some access to areas that uh, the, the single VIP or the uh, GA aren't going to have access to. And then again, as stated, they'll have access to the after parties and any kind of things going on at the hotel. Um, to answer your question, on Friday and Saturday, we are attempting to have an artist brunch from 8 to 12. Um, that's going to be like a continental breakfast. And then there'll be a uh, Bloody Mary bar and a uh, mimosa bar. Um, and where they have the cocktail tables at for the for the actual mimosa bar and Bloody Mary bar, there'll be silent auction items. So um, the mornings of prior to, we're going to allow you to get some food, get your day started, maybe get a drink or two in you, and then we'll have some great silent auction items for the charity as well. So now we got to get into, I guess, kind of the boring stuff. Talk a little bit about parking at the venue, just so people know what to expect. So, so we have parking for just over 200 Um cars there and there has been some people that have said there's no way that there's 200 cars to be able to fit at that venue i will tell you i was down there this weekend for the stadium tour doing some pr and i stopped by the venue they had a um a, a event there where they had um i don't know if it was like a, a pageant or what have you but it was a kids event and there was a bunch of um, pageant moms and things like that there and when i tell you that the the parking was swamped it was swamped but there was plenty of room and I have pictures that I want to post on my page as well. So we do have, actually have room to park. I know that parking in Philadelphia is a taboo and people are like, oh my God, parking's ridiculous. But we have 200 parking spots. Um, some of that is going to be taken up by artists and staff parking. So we have probably about a good 150 spots for people. And anyone who, uh, who you know, chooses to Uber, please do because obviously there's going to be some drinks flowing and things of that nature. And yep. we want to make sure that everybody is as safe and efficient as possible. We don't want any kind of horror stories surrounding our event with anyone being unsafe or uh, taking chances when they unnecessarily need to, you know, so uh, we want to make sure that, you know, people are safe and taken care of by any means, as always, if you have any questions regarding parking or anything of the nature, feel free to, uh, to message the BLE page and we'll make sure that we get the information out to you as necessary. So is there any shuttles available from any of the surrounding hotels that you've worked with? So, um, our hotel, our host hotel has a shuttle, but it's first come, first served. That's the Delta Marriott property. Um, it is close to the airport, and it's about the uh, hotel is about eight or nine miles, give or take, um, to, the, to the actual venue. So we are um, working with a shuttle company right now. We're in talks right now and trying to finalize the, uh, what the uh, what the breakdown is going to be as far as bringing on a shuttle company because I also need to provide ground transportation to and from for a lot of the artists. So in order to um, we already need shuttles for the artists anyway. So we might as well go ahead and get some shuttles for um, for the supporters as well. Um, we did offer shuttle passes prior to balls ballroom blitz um, being rescheduled and turned into masquerade. And those tickets that were purchased for the shuttle those will be honored. We will have a shuttle for those people that already purchased tickets. But for people that still want to add on that maybe are just now finding out about Masquerade, we want to offer a service for them as well. And it'll be first come, first serve, but it will alleviate some of the pressure of, of finding, uh, finding transportation to and from the venue for those interested. So you said the shuttle tickets will be honored from the previous shows. Just so it's clear and it's out there, all the tickets are being honored from previous shows, correct? Absolutely. So um, we started selling tickets in the beginning for ball, uh, what was Ballroom Blitz. Um, that was sold through um, BLE's website. 
Um, we made it very clear on our website when you purchase tickets that we do not offer refunds. Um, we have never offered refunds unless the show is canceled. That does not mean rescheduled, that means canceled. Um, take it for what you will. That's always been our policy and will always be our policy through our website. Um, the good news is we, uh, we then, um, after the first reschedule and getting some of the feedback we got from some of the supporters, we went through Ticket Leap and set up a, uh, a ticketing uh, site for the masquerade that was rescheduled for, um, for October. Those have already been refunded because Ticket Leap obviously has different refund policies than what BLE has. And now we are through 2300arena.com through the actual venue. And they also offer re, uh, refunds for any uh, rescheduling or postponing or cancellations. So we are now backed by the venue and by the uh, ticketing outlets that we choose to go through. We are no longer um, putting tickets through our website. You can still get to the ticket link through our website, don't get me wrong, but the tickets aren't sold through our website anymore. So we've done what we can to alleviate that problem going forward so that none of us supporters or BLE included get caught with our pants down as far as refunds go from here on out. So we're doing what we can to make those changes um, that our supporters have been asking for. And so if this is your first time hearing about the event, is there still tickets available for all three tiers? There are still tickets available. Um, the VIP and the Balls Out Blitz, the Balls Out Blitz are really going, just about gone. We have maybe 10 of them left. Um, so if anyone is interested in the Balls Out Blitz, now would be the time. Um, and this isn't me trying to rush you. I'm just strictly saying it's, it's yeah. about time left on the Balls Out Blitz. Um, in all honesty, I'm giving you real numbers. The, uh, the VIP right now, it's, it's, it's available, but um, we're gonna do a um, we're gonna do another full run coming through July fourth. So I will know I have a better understanding probably around the eleventh of where we actually sit, um, and then we'll start pushing from there and let people know, hey, like if you want to act, now's the time to act. As far as GAs and single days, we have plenty of those, um, but the VIP and the ball out blitz, of course, are going fast because those are the ones that come with a couple extra perks, and people are really interested in that. Yeah. So people might be turned off from the fact like if VIP sells out or balls out sells out, they might not want to do GA. Talk a little bit about, you know, why they, their experience won't be terrible. They'll still have a good time as general admission. Oh, of course. So um, this is a three day mini fest similar to an M3 style. Um, I don't want to keep comparing to M3, but many of our uh, yeah. our listeners and those tuning in, our supporters, they, they all know what M3 is about. So not to knock the atmosphere at M3, because I love it. I go every year as well. I've only missed one year of M3. Um, same thing with Monster of the Rock Cruise. I go on that, and I support Monster of the Rock Cruise as well. But just like Monster of the Rock Cruise is only limited to probably 2,000 people, maybe 2,500 at best, uh, there's an intimacy factor there. And it's the same thing with our events. Um, you know, we, we're not trying to target 30,000 people at one time, and we don't sell um, – tickets that are up on the grass. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that because I like enjoying the grass as well as anyone else at an amphitheater. But this is more of an intimate atmosphere. Um, there's not a bad seat in the house. When I say that, I truly mean it. Um, there will be some chairs available for those that have GA and um, maybe they're in, uh, you know, they're in some bad health right now or they have a, a ailment where they can't stand for a long time or what have you. I don't expect people to come in there and stand solidly for 10 hours. Um, but there are other things to see other than just event, can walk around and things of that nature. We don't, we don't uh, hold anybody can find the one general spot so you can walk around, but it will be sectioned off to where Balls Out Blitz has their area, VIP has their area, and GA has their area. This venue is held to 2,000 people. So it's going to be 2,000 of those that are interested and like-minded, just like yourself, that if you don't have one thing in common or you don't know anyone in there, you know that the one tie that binds is that you listen to the same kind of music. So, you know, you're there with 2,000 of your friends and family members that have the same uh, same passion drive and the same music interest in common. So, um, you know, it should be a great event and we hope to fill the place, 2,000 people. So that's what it's limited to, more intimate. So you said you're not trying to lock people down. Is there gonna be re-entry in and out of the venue? That part, no. That so, right. yeah, yeah. So there is no re-entry. I mean, you can go out back to the, uh, you can go out front and smoke or what have you, but you can't leave the, uh, the actual um, premise, the, the, uh, the uh, you know, the actual property. You can't leave the actual property and, and you know, go to, uh, you know, drive back to Baltimore and then come back later that night. We don't allow re-entry as far as that goes. Um, if you leave the property, you won't be able to get back in until the next day. All right. So, so talk a little bit about a 
the Thursday, the 28th. That's the artist showcase. So for people who might not know, give a little bit of a background on why that's important. Well, I mean, the grassroots of the business. I'm an independent promoter. I believe in independent artists as well. Um, you know, it's it's no secret that we work with national artists. And, you know, one of the first big, bigger shows we did, we uh, we made sure that we started out working with national artists. So we're kind of doing it a little bit backwards than what most people do it. A lot of people will start out with their local crowds and then kind of build from there. Um, we, we wanted to include everybody. We want to do local, regional, and national because there's a passing of the torch just as there is in sports. I mean, you know, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan had to pass to LeBron, and LeBron has to pass to, you know, the up-and-comers now or what have you. And, I mean, just like it works in sports, it works that way in any any kind of organized, uh, you know, atmosphere. Um, there's always going to be a point in time where, you know, I love Frankie Valley and I love Jackie Wilson, and I love the Four Tops and the Temptations, but, you know, nobody wants to hear an uh, 85, 90-year-old singing to their, you know, teenage sweetheart, um, you know, and, you know, we can uh, – we can agree that, you know, going forward, um, even though we're lucky enough to have our third or fourth resurgence of this genre of music that we love so dearly, um, just as we are on borrowed time, this genre of music is also on borrowed time. So we have to, uh, we have to also keep an eye on what's next and what's trending right now and uh, shed some light to those up and coming artists that people may not be aware of right now. So we feel a duty to do so. And a lot of our, uh, our openers and mid-card talent um, I, I look at the bands on this bill and I truly honestly um, put my name on it because I don't feel like there's anybody on this bill that is non deserving or anyone that we throw in here unjust. Um, you know, everyone that is on this bill from, you know, Thursday night, um, starting with Zenora to Saturday night ending with autographs. I don't feel there's a weak spot on the lineup and, um, you know, say what you will about it. You may not know uh, all the bands, but, um, uh, First time you heard the Beatles, you didn't know who they were either. You know, every band that you've ever heard in your life, you name it, every band you've ever heard. And there's a point in time when you didn't know who they were, but you gave them a chance. And that's all that we are asking people to do. Come out here, give us a chance. See if uh, we provide something different than some of the other live events you've been a part of. And, uh, you know, m maybe you walk away with a, a newfound understanding of why we do things the way that we do at the very least. Maybe you come away being a fan of Silver Tongue, or you come away being a fan of John's Crossing, or you come away being a fan of Wild America or Steel City or some of these bands that maybe you weren't familiar with prior. Um, if we can get, you know, each one of these bands five new five new fans, then we've done our part. So not only do you believe in them from a musical standpoint, we talked on the phone a couple months ago and you said you don't bring in, you know, prima donnas. You just want everybody who's nice and easy to work with and fun. That obviously makes your job easier, but talk a little bit about why that's important from like a fan's perspective, how that makes the show run smoother for them. Well, I mean, when I say that, I say it kind of tongue in cheek because I myself yeah. am a prima donna at times. We all have it in us. You know what I mean? Uh, anybody who doesn't, you know, we all have those days where we're just feeling ourselves. And then we have other days where we don't want anything to do with ourselves. You know what I mean? We all go through that kind of thing. So um, everyone on this bill was hand selected. You know, so it's, it's all people that I can pick up the phone right now and call every band on this bill. And um, there are very few promoters that can that can say that. And luckily, the promoters that can say that are promoters that I'm friendly with and they're friendly with me. So, um, you know, it, it was a collaborative effort. You know, um, you know, the, the artists um, wanted to be a part of this bill. The artists have um, have said if there's anything that we need from a promotional standpoint, um 99.8 percent of them have been fantastic up until this point um you know and and the ones that aren't you know and, and not just this bill but going forward uh we exercise our right not to work together again just like they can do with us if they're not happy with the services we provide so um you know the goal here is truly 100 thousand percent is to ensure a successful event for everyone involved and that means press supporters, venue owners, the people to keep the ice cold, promoters, everyone included. You know, we just want to ensure a successful event. I know that sounds very sunshine and rainbows to many people and unrealistic, but I'm a firm believer that, sorry, fly landed on me. Um, I'm a firm believer that if, uh, you know, if everybody carries the ball and does their part, then you can't fail, you know, and uh, it all starts with communication. And we started out communicating very well with everyone and there's a reason why we've been open and honest and people, sometimes we say things and people go, Ooh, I wouldn't have said that or, or Ooh, like, you know, you're pulling the current back too far, but 
that's what makes us special. You know what I mean? Because we're not scared to talk about it because it's a passion drive for us. It's not all about, you know, the bottom line. And yeah, the bottom line is great. And of course, you don't get into this to throw a party for people and, you know, and, and go in the hole. But at the same time, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter if you start an ice cream business, you know, you still got to buy the truck and the ice cream. So, you know, it's um, you have to go into it with the mindset that, hey, this isn't all about the, the reward. Um, as, as sick as it sounds, uh, I actually enjoy the risk as well. You know what I mean? Because it, it allows you to know exactly where where you need to up, where you need to down, where you need to change things, where you need to shift things, um, who you need to involve next time or who you don't need to involve next time. So it's a uh, it's risk assessment, assessment and research, just like everything else. But it's something that I believe in and have a passion for, uh, similar to you with everything that you do for the artists and your creative outlets. So we have to have that outlet. Otherwise, you know, we just uh, we just might implode. You know, I don't want to do that. So. <laughs> that's that's a fair that's a fair thing to not want so as we as we start to wrap up first of all you're not going to hit everybody so don't get mad if you don't hear your name mentioned but just give a shout out because it's not just you running the event give a shout out to a couple of the people who have you know helped you out run this get this together and help it go so smoothly well there's there's some people that are involved that i i don't i don't want to put out there right now because um i just don't want there's some other things working um All right, yeah. from a business standpoint. So like I will I will say it in general in generalized statement. Um the promotion team, you know who you are. Um a lot of people think that it's me um posting all, everything from BLE and creating these these massive posts and these uh these really cool flyers and these movie quotes and things. It's actually my promotion team that I'm working with, um, helping that out. So um to them I want to say thank you very much um to the staff. Um, that works for BLE and um, I'll be honest with you they don't get paid they're all volunteers they all do it for the passion drive um, there's just not any money left at the end of the day to pay anybody quite frankly and they've they've done it because they have a love for it and they have a love for me and they have an understanding of the vision going forward and I have a love for them back so that anyone who has worked on the staff and that includes people that may not still be on the staff for whatever reason um, you know we know that we didn't get here alone and we appreciate it um, to the press, um, you know, yourself included, um, people that have been interested in the events and sharing the posts out, making sure that the artists get interviewed and making sure that people are aware of this event. Um, the people at the venue that have been so so cool to work with, um, even the people that um, you know aren't a part of Masquerade but were a part of Baldwin Blitz for whatever reason, you know, anyone that makes BLE work and make BLE tick, and you know the artists that. Um, that have been so kind to to keep me going when I wanted to stop and told me that what you have is something that's very different. And even some of my, what what most would call competitors that have picked me up by my bootstraps and gave me uh, great advice when they didn't have to. Um, agents, um, I'm speaking of. And there's two of them that are, two that I emulate that, that I will not put their names out, but um, they know who they are. And I made it clear to them, you know, I'm, I feel a duty not to let people down. Uh, I feel like I'm I'm on a track to uh, to make things a little bit different for people and to uh, to right some of the wrongs. And um, that's not to make me holier than now or say that I'm not making any mistakes. But I feel like we have a team around us, and when I say team, I mean everyone included. And I would be, you know, um, shunned, and I would never let myself down. Uh, uh, never let myself. Uh, not down, I should say, but I'll, I'll never let myself come back from um, not mentioning the, the people who have made BLE possible um, above all else as a supporter. Because if, if there wasn't, you know, people out there to, uh, to attend our events, um, it would be no different than doing a live to no audience. And uh, to do it for no audience is no different than singing in front of the mirror. And uh, I don't consider that to be a business. Um, so, you know, to the, to the supporters of BLE, whether they be supporters who are still supporters or supporters who trusted in us in the beginning and because of this whole COVID thing have, uh, have lost trust in us or have decided to go a different route, I don't hold any ill will. Um, I just want people to know that going forward, I will put my best foot forward to make everyone proud to support this event and any artists that want to, uh, want to work with BLE, I will make you proud to have, uh, BLE as a, uh, as an alliance, you know, and um, same thing with the press. So, you know, anything that you guys need going forward, um, please feel free to let us know. Um, we appreciate everything that you do, your hard work and efforts to go in and everyone is taking time away from their family and um, 
and going into their own uh, personal effects to make this happen. So I don't want anyone to feel like that uh, that falls on deaf ears or blind eyes. You know what I mean? My yeah, heart is yeah. wide open to y'all, and I really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart um, because without you guys, uh, we would not any longer be in business. Um, it was very close to losing it for a lot of us. And um, we're still hanging by a string at times, but um, that's the reason that I get up in the morning and do it because I, I think there's a lot of people that believe in the process and the product. Yeah, so final thing, literally anything you want to talk about. If there's something we haven't touched on about the festival, just go on, get it get it out there so people know about it. Um, About the festival, so the main things we touched on, but I want to reiterate to people, um, forget everything that you, you, you think about a three-day mini-fest um, featuring this genre of music. This is a very intimate, very well-structured and organized event. Um, we have... Um, we have live broadcasts from internet radio stations on board. We have um, live interviews on board. There's going to be people shooting documentaries there um, for various projects. Um, this is not just a, a, a concert. This is an actual event and it's something to be a part of. And um, when the doors open, you're going to come in having just left a, a, a glimpse into what we can do for an event because you're just coming in from a hotel experience or you just come in from, you know, chilling with some people that you met from out of state that you don't really get a chance to see. So you're coming in on a positive note. We want that positiveness to continue from the time the doors open to the time the doors close. And then when the doors close, whatever your extracurriculars are for the night, we're going to make sure that we provide a safe environment for you to conduct yourself. So, so um, constructed and uh, constructed and organized debauchery, I would say. Um, that's what this weekend is going to be about. So um, you know, it's about building relationships and there's a lot of people that we're working with for the first time. They're working with us for the first time, you being one of them, Sam. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to getting in front of people again with no masks so that people can see our, you know, our shining faces and see what we're all about. Um, I feel like with a mask on and you talking to somebody, it's no different than you texting to somebody. You can't tell their, uh, their body language or their, you know, their emotion or their sincerity behind it. Now that we come from behind the mask and we can kind of see each other again and see the sincerity in each other. Um, I think that that goes a long way, and I'm looking forward to getting that uh, that feeling and that rush again of being out in front of people and being able to uh, to be a part of the entertainment community. Yeah, for sure. All right, thank you very much for taking the time to do this. I'm going to post all the ticket links in the description. People, go buy your tickets. I want to see you in Philly. So thank Absolutely. you very much. I'll, I will say one thing before we end, and not to cut you, yep. but uh, no, no worries. So about, about the tickets. So 2300arena.com is a ticketing site. Yep. Um, the ticketing site is a little bit hard to work at times for some. Um, I realize that not everyone is on the same level from a technology uh, technology standpoint. Um, so if there's anyone that needs assistance, we have created a customer service group. Uh, I'm going to post that on the BLE page when we're done with the interview. And I'm going to make sure I share that out on a constant basis. If there's anyone who needs any assistance as far as walking you through the process, we do have four or five customer service agents in that group that will actually walk you through that process and ensure that you get a ticket level that you, uh, that you're looking for. So if anyone needs that assistance, please feel free to reach out. Um, that's what we're here for. So we work for you. All right. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Appreciate the time, Sam. We'll be in touch. Yes, we will.